If you enjoy gardening, get to know your friends at the Franklin Garden Club. Learn more. Become a member. Send an email to franklingardenclubma at gmail.com. Community radio in the public interest. You're listening to WFPRLP, Franklin, on 102.9 FM. And worldwide, 24-7 at WFPR.FM. Thanks for being with us. Hello, this is Frank Valley with Frank's Music. Jim Derrick is with us on the radio. At the first 2022 meeting of the Franklin Conservation Commission, I'm Jeff Millen. I'll be chairing the first part of this meeting. Um, a few opening announcements. Due to the concerns regarding the COVID-19 virus, the Conservation Commission meeting is available to be attended in person and via the Zoom platform. In an effort to ensure citizen engagement and comply with open meeting law regulations, citizens will be able to dial into the meeting using the provided phone number or by copying into the link. The phone number would be 929-205-6099, and the meeting number is 847-2624-76, I'm sorry, 7969. If you're having trouble accessing through the link, please call on your phone and use star six to toggle between the mute, unmute and star nine to raise your hand. If you wish to attend in person, the meeting is being held in the council chambers, second floor of the municipal building. Now there was a conflict tonight with the Zoning Board of Appeals and that is being broadcast on Zoom on Franklin TV, Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 26. Please see the ZBA agenda on the town webpage for the Zoom for the Zoom link. So with that, I'll start the meeting. And for the public hearings, the first item is 33 Charles. Or actually, before I do that, let me do an attendance um, of the members. Michael Ryan here, okay. and Jeff Millen's here. Meg. Meg Johnson's Meg here. here. Sorry, Richard. Meg Hagen here as well. Very good. All right. Thanks. And so uh, Pat is going to be in late, and Jeff is not going to be here with us uh, this evening. Um, so 701, the first item on the agenda is 33 Charles River Drive. Do we have represent? Yes, we do. Can you yes. introduce yourself, sir? Uh, uh, Vance. Oh, sorry, Vance uh, Brony. Okay. Uh, I, I, know, I know you were here. Hi. Hi. You were here before? Yes. Okay, so, so where are we now with, with your project? Well, we received the DMP um, number. I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Susan, I'm sorry. Yeah, Vance, talking. I can talk yep. for you. Um, may I share my screen, please? Okay. Okay. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so um, my name is Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting, and you uh, see Vance Peroni, uh, the homeowner applicant in front of you um, live. And uh, so we have filed a notice of intent. Uh, this is our second hearing um, for the construction of a in-ground swimming pool, a patio, and um, a pavilion in the backyard to the home at 33 uh, Charles River Drive. And portions of this, this activity um, lies within the 100 foot buffer zone and the 50 foot uh, locally regulated buffer zone um, to a bordering vegetated wetland located in the back here. So um, at the last hearing, um, you know, we presented the commission seemed fine with everything. Um, the abutting homeowner um, to the southeast, I think that is, southeast um, had had a concern about runoff uh, from the new impervious areas of the patio and the pool um, heading down the hill toward uh, her property, which I believe is out in the back here. So um, Vance had contacted his um, his engineer to come up with a design and can you see that on the screen here? Um, I'm going to zoom in. So um, they came up with a design to capture the um, 
the runoff from the storm event. Uh, and it's like a, a little basin, rock lined basin to, um, you know, be a little bit below on the slope and it'll capture any runoff that leaves the patio. It'll come down the hill and uh, it could be collected in this basin before it goes anywhere near her property. So that was where we left off. Any questions? <clears throat> I have a question. Sure. When I looked at the plan earlier today, it looked like one of these lines indicated a property line then, and that the uh, drainage area there was outside the property. Is that just uh, uh, on Am this plan, right. this plan, or the other plan? On this plan. Oh, um, well, there is a drainage easement that um, is located in the back. Um, I am not sure what all these lines are. Hold on a second. Let me. Vance, do you have any idea? Um, I know that the, the drainage line is not within. It, that is on our property line there, okay. within there, yes. within our property. Oh, some of the oh, there it comes down here. All right, I yeah, see it now. Yeah, thirty-five foot side property line uh, building setback is is that line that comes through here. Um, I see the property line now. Y yeah, and the property. Yeah. Within your, your your yeah okay. I'm satisfied. <clears throat> okay. When I was reviewing the minutes from the last meeting, and. Um, the, the comments that, that was on uh, on today's meeting it seems like the town engineer had some issues with the easement or, or the use of the easement um well i don't know who wants to speak to that but i i can just tell you that um vance did contact the uh dpw and engineer um for the town and got the sign off from both and i think becca can attest to that um, I have not received a recent email confirming that it's out of the easement. When I had sent Mike Maglio this schematic plan from this design, um, he requested that the, um, he, so he did confirm that there's minimal flow slash runoff. However, he advised that the plan should show grade and grade direction. Um, I forwarded that email to you, Susan, and Vance. Mm -hmm. And if you're confirming that it's outside the easement, that's, yep. that's great. Um, additionally, the revised plan should show resource areas, buffer zones, and impervious surface square footage. If you know what that is, Susan, that's fine. We can put it on record. I'm okay with that. Um, and then if the drainage pit is not in the easement, then the town engineer is fine, and I, that, I'm, that's fine for, with me. Okay. S Susan, any, any more initial comments? Um, well, the... The basin won't be um, impervious, so the, we're, we won't be adding any new impervious, um, just to address what, what Becca was asking. But um, but I do have those numbers, um, and they're in the, the NOI that I okay. submitted, I think, okay, for each um, zone, you know, each buffer zone. Okay, that's, that's good. Thank you. Okay. I know the previous yep. plan didn't have the total impervious surface on it. So that's why I was Oh, asking. it might not be on the plan, right? I think right. it's just in the narrative and in the um, bylaw form, you know, the sure. the uh, so waiver form. Is this being graded? That was, those were the two other comments the town engineer had asked. Is this being graded and what is the grade direction? Um, well, the, the basin will have to be it is on a slope a little bit, so it, that'll be dug out to create that basin. Um, it's fairly level back there until you get to that the fence, which is here, and then it steeply drops. I'll um, just switch the. Um, Sorry, Susan. It's okay. Just say something. There we got it. So yeah. The, um, the the update that there are red lines that do show the grading on that. Um, the, okay. the, the, uh, okay. the the newest drawing. So that it, oh. if, you, if you blow it up a little bit, it's hard to see. They're very faint, but they are on there that show the grading. She did include. Oh, that. I see right on the I see on the corners of by the pool. Yep, those arrows. Okay. 
Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Hmm. So, I'm just, we're going to talk about it on the fly a little bit here. So, for the pit, um, I personally don't think you need a drainage pit. Okay. I think that is... I, I commend you for that, and I think it's it's great, and you're thinking in the right direction. Okay. Um, but I think it's a cost oh. for sure. Overkill. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. you could do a natural berm. You could do plantings. Okay. You could throw a rock wall in there. You know, however you can guide that water um, down and away. And and again, there is minimal superficial flow, right. so. Um, I, I, if that's and any comment. Honestly, a lot of it, a lot of it is heading right down into right. the basin anyway. And then for the um, commission, that means they're not excavating, they're not bringing in fill material. It's staying the way that it is um, outside of his existing disturbed lawn. Um, yeah. From the fence, from that existing fence line, and the the natural drainage of this thing hasn't been changed by this. Right. by this yeah. construction here. I, I mean, it's it was draining that way before, it's gonna right. drain that way now. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'd be comfortable recommending an approval. If you would like to condition that I work with Vance and Susan in the future for this plan on whatever their BMP is after the fact, after your approval, um, I'm more than happy to do that. If you'd like to continue it until they have a finalized direction that I'm whatever is clever for the commission. So you had initially recommended uh, continuous until you had the, the final plan in place. Yeah. Until most still... of these questions were answered, yeah. Okay. So, so let me throw it over. Any... Oh, sorry, Bricker, anything else you want to add? Nope, that was all. Okay. Um, Richard, any, any other comments, thoughts? No, I think the plan's uh, pretty specific and shows what they're going to do. Okay. It's going to be nice. I think, Megan? Um, I guess my only question is, if you are going to go forward with the pit, um, how much more disturbance to that area in creating the pit within that 25-foot zone would there be? Rika, do you have any concerns with that? Uh, that would be that would have been my follow-up question if they were going forward with the pit. I guess I understood, Vance, that you were going to nix it. That's was reading well, I, facial I, expressions, I but you didn't say that. <laughs> no. no, no, I <laughs> understand. Uh, Vance, um, I can't see you on the screen, but I'm guessing that you would prefer to remove the pit yes. completely yes. from the design? Yep. Yeah. So that, that's what you I think your do. assumptions are okay. correct. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, thoughts? Thank you, then. That answers my question, so thank you. Thanks, Meg. Um, no, I, I, I'm a little leery of approving it before we have the final plan, but sure. at the same time, well, we don't want to create the final work. plan. Well, this kind of this is the final plan. Like, what else do you need from this? Um, you know, that was a schematic showing the basin, but if we're removing it, um, we could strike that from the record and use this plan um, it is a certified you know stamped plan so the, um, on, the only difference between both of them susan is that the schematic plan shows all of the paving this this plan that you have up right now does not oh uh, so to michael's point and to what i had wrote in my agent's report it's not complete i mean it shows the drawing it, right here. It's it, shown it, sure. in light gray, but sure. I mean, it, true, true. It doesn't call out like this is going to be paved, but sure. um, you can see it. It is a patio. Um, yeah, I, it's up to you guys. I don't know. It's whatever you decide. Okay, well, in conjunction, if, if you look at the outline of the paving area there, and in, in conjunction with the other drawing right there, you can plainly see where the uh, paved area is going to is. Well, yeah, um, and it's all within just it's all within all disturbed the, area already, just pre-existing lawn. Yeah, I'm, so I withdraw um, my concern. Another option maybe is if we. Um, 
if the commission could close and we just resubmit um, this plan revised to with the uh, basin removed off of it so you know that you have a good idea of you know what's proposed the only thing will be missing will be this basin okay so this is a public hearing is there anybody in the audience who would wish to, to comment about this particular project do we have anybody online who wishes to comment about this particular project should we take a vote on whether or not we should, should uh, continue this yeah, continue I mean, or approve I, yeah i'm i'm comfortable uh and well is the agent comfortable yeah i would still condition um that i receive those updated plans mm -hmm. and a scope of work for um stormwater runoff and i would condition that i work with the applicant and the representative to design that and of course i'll come and report it back to the commission okay. but other than that i'm i'm comfortable okay. So we're all set then to vote whether or not we're going to approve the plan, correct? I think so. Could, could I have a motion? So I, I move to approve the plan with conditions as stated by the conservation agent. Okay. Actually, actually we, we need to close the hearing first. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I move to close the hearing. Can I have a second? I second it. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Uh, vote on the Vote to close. Richard, vote. I vote to close. Megan? I vote to close. And uh, Jeff Milne, I also vote to close. So we remain unanimous in voting to close. Now, why don't you go ahead with the... So um, I move to approve the NOI for 33 Charles River Drive uh, with the conditions as stated by the conservation agent. Um, yes. Second that. Very good. Thanks, Richard. All right, so I have a motion and a second. Um, Vote to approve. Very good. Jeff, no votes to approve. Megan? Meg Hagen votes to approve. Thank you. And Richard? Richard votes to approve. Thank you very much. We have a unanimous vote to, vote to go forward. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> well, swimming party. Okay, uh, we can move on to the second item on the agenda for 74 South Street. Do we have represented? Well, it's still Susan, but they did request a continuance earlier today. So. Okay, so should we go right to continuance? Sure, unless Susan, did you want to speak about it a little bit? Is there anybody here who wishes no, to speak? No, I, I just stayed on the call just to make sure it was okay. continuance. Yep. Okay, no. um, anybody here wishes to uh, speak on, 74, on uh, 74 South Street? No, okay, very good. Um, Richard, okay. can, can I have a, a motion to uh, continue? I have a motion to continue 74 South Street to December 15th. And what, what Megan time? Megan seconds. Same, uh, 701. 701. And, and Megan, you second it? I second. Thank you. I vote to continue, Michael Ryan. And Jeff Mellon votes to continue. Megan? Megan Hagen's votes, votes to continue. Thank you, and Richard. Votes to continue. All right, so we have four votes to uh, to, to continue to uh, the fifteenth at seven o two. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. okay. Moving on to the third item on the agenda for public hearings, um, zero Lincoln Street, Franklin Heights, Parcel B. Is anybody here uh, representing uh, the developer? No. Anybody online? Where are we, uh, Brika? Um, at an impasse right now. Um, we, since the last hearing, the applicant rep Beta and I met to discuss the latest beta review letter. Um, notable items include erosion and sedimentation control methodology, phasing, and regulatory compliance, so making sure that they're um, specifically outlining their performance standards. Um, the applicant has yet to submit updated information, but I know they're working on it. We actually have, as of today, we've scheduled an, our next uh, meeting on Tuesday. So I expect to receive a review letter probably tomorrow, and then we'll have a day or so to review it, and then we'll talk about it on Tuesday. So recommend continuing. Okay, so we're, we're going to continue to the 15th at 702? Correct. Can I have a motion? I move to continue to the 15th. Thank you, sir. Can I have a second, either Megan or Richard? I will second. Thank you very much. Meg Hagan. Thank you. And a vote, Megan? 
Uh, yeah, I can submit the motion to, um, sorry, to, to continue. To, thank you. And, and Richard? Vote to continue. Michael? Vote to continue. Mm -hmm. Jeff Milne? Also vote to continue, so we're unanimous and voted to continue to the 15th and 7.02. Moving right, <laughs> al right along to uh, 803 Washington Street. You also indic indicated that's to be continued. Is there anybody speaking to that? We have to open it. This is the first public hearing for this one, though, so we have to open it and then continue it. Okay. So whatever language you say for that. <laughs> Uh, opening the hearing for 803 Washington Street. Perfect. The applicant has requested to continue it. <laughs> so um, if I, can, I can tell you a little bit about it since this is the first public hearing. Um, so it's for the demolition of an existing single family home and the construction of a new single family home within the 100 foot buffer zone to BBW. Um, so I reviewed the delineation on Tuesday and agree with the boundary. However, that NOI narrative is incomplete. Um, and I did communicate this with the, um, the applicant and the rep. So temporary and permanent impacts still need to be quantified, similar to the scope of work and construction sequence. For example, location of stockpile materials, access issues, proposed seed mixes, erosion controls, etc. cetera. Um, additionally, our local resource area impact summary form reflects 70, um, 7,470 square feet of temporary disturbance within the buffer zone um, with additional notes reflecting additional disturbance totaling approximately 10,370 square feet. But the NOI narrative reflects approximately 6,420 square feet of disturbance with 1,050 square feet within the 25 to 50 foot, foot buffer zone and the remaining square feet within the 50 to 100 foot. Um, so there's some discrepancies with the um, total amount of impacts, so the applicant will be providing updated information on that. Do we know is the footprint going to be relatively similar to the footprint um, of the, the older building? I believe so. I don't think the, the home itself is growing, it's just changing locations. Um, so it's, it's more of a one for one, but again, that square footage will, will determine that, especially if there's a garage, for example, or if they're proposing a deck, things of that nature. That's a very visible log. It'd be nice to see something something going in there. Yes, yes. And that, that boundary is very defined. It's right toe of slope. So as long as they're not going to go off the hill, <laughs> they will stay perched on top of the hill. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, do any of the commissioners have any initial thoughts that they want to express? Uh, none for <coughs> me. Megan? Not for me at this time, thank you. Thank you. Richard? Nothing for me. Okay, anybody in the audience, this is a public hearing. Have anything to say about the 803 Washington Street? I guess it's in the corner of Washington Street and Spring, and Spring Street. Um, yes. yes, yes, it's right across from Hillside. Yep. Street. yep. All right, can I have a motion to uh, continue this? And, and by the way, this is 704, is that where we're at? 703. 703, okay. Uh, Michael Ryan moved to continue the NOI for 803 Washington Street to 15, 15 December. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have a second? Second. Thank you, sir. Um, a vote? Michael Ryan, vote to continue. Okay. Megan? Meg Hagen, vote to continue. Thank you. And Richard? Two votes to continue. And Jeff Miller also votes to continue. So. We're unanimous in continuing uh, 803 Washington Street until December 15th at 7.04. Brings us to the last item on our agenda uh, for the public hearings for this evening. Brent Street, Lot 1. Do we have a representation for, hi. You want to come to the mic? Oh, yes, sir, this is the public. Oh, you're the public, okay. Do we have anybody representing the, uh, is he online? Is. Yes, I am. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, sir. Can you identify yourself? Yes, my name is Norman Hill. I'm a licensed civil engineer with a consulting firm of land planning. And I'm representing Mr. Kelleher this evening, who has another meeting. He couldn't be here tonight. 
So I'd like to give you a quick overview. I'm not going to ask you to vote on this tonight because we have yet to hear from your consulting firm uh, on their review. I'd like to wait till we get their review and then make the revisions that they may require. But I'd like to give you a brief overview of this, of this site. It's a one acre lot. If you were standing on Bent Street looking at the lot, everything slopes to the left. So the road goes downhill to the left, the lot goes downhill to the left. And then downhill on the left side of the lot is a bordering vegetated wetland. It, uh, it's actually by the street, it's not on the lot, it's below the lot. But as you go back about halfway back onto the lot, the wetland cuts off the back left corner of the lot. So we have uh, designed a septic system. Our client would like to have a new home built on this lot. And we have uh, called for siltation controls. And um, we can file a notice of intent. We ask uh, for your permission to uh, to build a house on this lot, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. But again, uh, once we're done with this discussion, we're going to continue this until we hear from your consulting firm. Understood. Bricker, do you have any, any comments? Um, yeah. Again, I'm, I'm just going to read from my agent report, if that's all right. Um, so as mentioned, as Nor mentioned, this is the construction of one single family home with a septic system, driveway, and utility connections within the 100 foot buffer zone to BBW. Um, I did review the delineation on November 27th, and I agree with the boundary. Um, however, the NOI narrative is missing some information as I communicated with Norm earlier this week. Um, temporary and permanent impacts still need to be quantified, similar to the scope of work and construction sequence location of stockpile materials, access issues, proposed seed mixes, erosion controls, et cetera. Um, additionally, the NOI and the wetland summary report present um, conflicting information as it relates to vernal pools. Um, after speaking with a contracted wetland scientist, he confirmed that a vernal pool is located on site. It is not certified under national heritage. However, under our local bylaw, whether or not it's certified, it is still considered protected. Um, and he did provide indicators which show that it is a vernal pool. Um, similarly, the NOI and associated plans should reflect this resource area, the vernal pool, and its associated buffer zone. Um, the NOI is also missing an alternatives analysis as required under the local bylaw with the provisions of 310 CMR 10.584 for projects involving structures within the 50-foot buffer zone and septic components within the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, but commissioners, please note that since this is a single family home project, no stormwater management or drainage calculations are required. Um, additionally, we are required to continue this to December 15th anyways, which I communicated to the applicant as the legal ad has only been circulated for seven days and it needs to circulate for 10. Um, but we were required by law to open this within 21 days. Brigham, where is the vernal pool on, on this? Yes, so I included the email that I got from the wetland scientist in your Google Drive. It is to the north, but let me just pull that up so I am not misspeaking. One moment. If I may jump in here a second. Okay. Um, yeah, in, his, in, the, in the botanist report, he mentions that there may be a vernal pool. He said he found some tree frog eggs this March in that area where he said there was a depression and some some standing water. But that area I believe he's talking about is more than 100 feet off of this lot. Sure. Um, it has a 100 foot buffer zone too as well. So just as long as we reflect that buffer zone on the plan, um, just so we can be sure that all the, the scope, the full scope of work is outside of those resource areas. We will, we'll definitely revise the plan to show that, sure. Okay, perfect. Um, did you still want me to read his email? Sure. I can. Okay. Um, so there is a vernal pool within what this wetland scientist designated as wetland A. It's about approximately 150 feet from the edge of the lot under consideration for the NOI. So the pool isn't on the property, but it is on the adjacent property. Um, I noted several wood frog egg masses within the area just when I was out there in March 2020. Um, let's see. If you walk along Bent Street away from Lot 1, you should see a culvert that drains the wetland under the road. The pool also drains into that culvert. The pool is not enormous by any means, but it is deep enough to support wood frogs. Um, 
I don't recall seeing mole salamander egg masses, and there were not any fairy shrimp. I think the pool probably dries out too quick for salamanders. Um, but he did send photos, and as I mentioned, because he saw wood frogs, um, the size of the pool, and even though it has a hydrologic connection to another water body, the fact that the culvert itself is underneath that water, um, it can it still it still qualifies as a vernal pool under national heritage. It's just not certified. Okay. Um, any of the other commissioners have any thoughts at this point in time, Michael? If I'm reading this correctly, it looks like the septic system is pretty much outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Is that correct? It, it, it's not outside the 100 foot of a BBW. It's, uh, it's probably 85 feet away from the uh, BBW at the nearest point. Okay. Thank you. Richard, any thoughts? I'm good for the time being. I'm sorry, sir. I'm all right. Okay. Meg? No questions for me at this time. Okay. Thank you. So for the public, we are going to continue this to the 15th, but if anybody wishes to, to speak on, on this tonight, you, you're welcome to come up and, and, and speak. Hi there, I'm Todd Humphreys, my wife Liz Humphreys, uh, behind me. Uh, we're at 84 Bent Street. We're directly across from the wetland. Um, we're also somewhat speaking on behalf of Mark Conza, who is our next door neighbor at 16 Bent Street. Um, the wetland across the street um, in periods of you know, heavy rain, when it's a very wet season, gets pretty full. Um, we had some significant drainage problems back in 2018 um, met with Mike Maglio about that, um, discussed a lot about the, uh, the culvert, the drainage culvert that was there um, that goes under the road. Um, it feeds into a pipe uh, under the Kanzas, which is 16 Bent Street, um, under their yard. That pipe had been damaged a number of years ago. So that when, when the, the outflow from that wetland leaves the pipe, it's actually leaving right in his backyard, which ultimately slopes down towards our yard and starts to saturate our, our lawn in the bottom of our driveway. Uh, so I guess the, the reason we wanted to come tonight was to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the town had been aware of the problem with that culvert, with the pipe, with the inadequate drainage. Um, back in 2018, we addressed our drainage problems, um, a very large project. Um, and after that, it seemed like the urgency to fix the pipe went away. But our, I guess our concern is that with, with the new house going in, if there's additional stress put on that wetland, if there's additional runoff that might sure. fill the wetland, yeah. that this might be an appropriate time to address the, the drainage issue under the street. Um, and I think you said you saw the, the you, you've walked by and seen the culvert as well. It's, it's a mess. It's in really pretty bad shape. And I, you can also see water going around the pipe, yeah. not necessarily through the pipe. So it's probably not really good for Bent Street. No. Sorry, I, I may have taken a photo of that and sent it to my friends at DPW. So okay, so I, I just that's exactly what you're talking about. You know, if this if this is a, an opportunity yeah. to fix that, I think it'd be great. So, as far as yes, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to split apart your comment and focus on the project at hand, and yep. then answer additionally. Um, so, for the project at hand, we have a peer review consultant, which helps me look at all the regulatory compliance, all the stormwater runoff. They are engineers, so they have the calculations, and they do the math, and they have the software. Um, so in conjunction with their wetland team, they will be able to determine the load that that wetland will receive, and um, upstream, downstream impacts, things like that. Okay. Even though this isn't a stream, it's a diffuse wetland, so it moves, I, right? Can I interject for one second? Sure. I did hear a comment about a single family home Approval not requiring a stormwater management plan. That's correct. Can you explain that? Sure. Sure. Um, so that is typical. No stormwater management or drain drainage calculations are required under state regulations. The commission can still request that the applicant 
look at that, especially if there is a public comment. So take that for what you will. Um, as for the culvert, um, because I sent my photos, we are already going to take a look at it next week. So that, cool. that was my that's comment. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Uh, I w one thing I'd recommend is um, go to the back of the Kanza's yard between 12 and 14, or 14 and 16. Sorry, between 14 and 16, and see, check the check out the pipe. It, it's it's in bad shape. Okay. So, cool. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Wish to, yes, sir. You, you please sign in and introduce yourself. My name is Romeo Zalonic, and I live at 95 Bent Street, which is on the same side, only down the street from where the proposed house is going. And uh, the concerns we have is we are, have been, we've been in that house for over 30 years. And with all the building going on, our property has become inundated with water now. It's so bad that I can't mow my lawn until usually almost June for the first time. And we're just worried that with the, the house going in that's uphill, with that area where it collects water, if that gets too much, it runs towards our property. And we do have a pipe right now that goes under our driveway and goes across and drains. But now we have, during most of the year, every time we get heavy rain, we actually have a stream running through our property from the back to the front. So we're just concerned as far as, you know, how much more pressure is going to put on the area of wetlands by that house going in. And um, as far as salamanders and frogs, just come to our house anytime during the summertime. Oh, uh, don't tease me. Uh, <laughs> we've had 12 frogs sitting on our front door, so um, a lot of wildlife, a lot of wildlife. And I'm just, we're just concerned about the, uh, the impact it's going to have, you know, as far as mainly the water. So, so we just want to bring that up. So, thank okay. So, thank you, sir. Thank so, you. so, Brinko, where are we with um, getting either Bader or someone in to look at um, the water situation on Brent Street? Sure. Um, I think before the commission suggests, by the way, Pat is on, um, I think before the commission suggests soliciting beta um, for that, I can reach out to Mike Maglio, our town engineer, and see what he thinks and see if he has the capacity um, and time to be able to review this. I do think having plans that show grading and planting and if you're bringing in any fill material norm um, to help supplement that uh, recommendation by Ma Mike Maglio would be very beneficial. Um, and would expedite the process. Otherwise, we'll just be asking the same questions the next time. So do you think on the 15th, we're gonna be in a position to, to, to review what the, what the town engineer's thoughts are and what, what, what other consultants' thoughts might, might, might be? Yes, um, I can, I will send, I'm pretty uh, quick on things. So I can send Mike Maglio an email tomorrow. Um, Norm, as soon as you can get me that updated information, I can forward that right on. Um, to Mike and we can talk about it internally. Um, Beta is going out to, to do their site visit actually tomorrow, so I would expect a letter from them, SANS drainage calculations, um, sometime next week. And okay. then so it sounds like folks are going to have a lot more to talk about on the 15th um, you know, regarding you know, your particular concerns. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, may I correct something I had misstated? Sure. Um, the question was asked, is the septic system within 100 feet of the wetland? And I incorrectly said it was. It's actually just over 100 feet from the wetland. It's not within 100 feet. All right. And then the other thing I wanted to, uh, to address is, will we be bringing in any fill? Well, in order to build that septic system, you're going to have to bring in Title V sand, a lot of sand for that septic system. But other than that, I don't believe any other fill will be brought in or out of the site. Um, okay. 
the excavation from the foundation would be adequate to fill around the septic system in the house. So I don't see any other fill coming to the site other than the Title V sand. Okay. Could you denote that in your response? You can combine your response to me and Beta. That's fine. But could you um, spell that yeah. out in the narrative or whatever revised letter, please? I will. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I, th I think we're set to, uh, to vote on continuing this to the 15th? Yes. Okay. Can I have a motion, sir? I move to close the public hearing. No, I think we're closing the we're public hearing. We're not closing it. We're not closing it. No, we're, we're, we're just, we're just going to continue okay. this to the 15th. Okay. I move to, uh, to continue the NOI for 74th South Street to uh, the 15th December. Street. 705? Uh, 704 and it's Bent Street, Lot 1. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, okay, I have a vote, sir. Uh, I vote oh, to continue. Um, kind of a, a second motion from either Megan or Richard? A second. Okay, thanks, Megan. Uh, now, Michael, vote. Okay, Michael Ryan, I uh, vote to continue the NOI for Bent Street, Lot 1, to 15 December. Richard? I vote to continue. Megan? I second. I vote to continue. Thank you. Okay, and Jeff Nolan also votes to continue, so we'll have a lot to talk about on the 15th. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. Stay thank well. you, Norm. Thank you. Bye -bye. So that concludes the public hearings. Um, for tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Is it, uh, Pat's on the line? He is. Pat, do you hey, want everyone. to... Hey, how are you? I'm you... good. I apologize for being late tonight. Thanks want... for Do you want to take, take over the gavel? <laughs> Sure. I'll be sure. happy to relinquish uh, re 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 control over this is a good place. We're, we're done with the public hearings. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you for taking care of the hard part. So we didn't do anything. We just continued everything so you could handle it next time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I get for not, not being present. <laughs> um, great. Well, th thanks, everyone. And, and again, apologize, uh, apologies for being late uh, this evening. Um, Sounds like we are at the general business point of our agenda. Uh, the first item up is a minor buffer zone activity um, for 11 Squibnocket Road. Is the owner or the representative up? Yes, hey, that's me, Pat. Shane Kurtz here, how are you? Hi, Shane, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, so I think, and bring up Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this was on last month, but um, we may have continued uh, without any discussion. Does, does that sound right? Yep. And that was my fault. Apologies. I uh, didn't understand the procedure correctly. Didn't realize I needed to attend. So. No, no, not at all. Um, can you give us a brief overview uh, of uh, what you're requesting? Yes. So uh, just some tree work on the property. So there is a very large 120 foot uh, pine tree that is either dead or very close to dying by vine. Um, and it is within striking distance of my house. Um, my childhood home was hit with one of those bomb cyclones about uh, six or seven years ago. And we had three trees crash and hit the house. So this one's been keeping me up at night uh, and wanted to have it removed. But I am, uh, the, the back part of my property does back up to um, a conservation area and wetland area um, this tree, I think, Brika, it's just outside the 25 foot zone, yep. um, but it is within the 100 foot zone. Um, so I wanted to have that that taken down. Um, and then within my application as well, there is a zone of trees that um, is on the left side of my property um, that for ease of kind of process and going through this at all in one go, uh, at some point within the next two years, I, I may want to take down those trees as well, just to kind of um, expand the property a bit and get some more sunlight to the back of my property. Um, those are well outside the, the, the 25 foot zone, but including those as part of this as well. Okay, um, thank you, Shane. Um, Brika, did you have any initial comments before we get to any questions from the board? Um, 
Yeah, comments and confirmations. So I did go out um, and delineate, and I can confirm that all the trees are outside of the 25-foot buffer zone. Um, I did encourage Shane to include all scope of work that he wants to do, considering the MBZA lasts for three years, which is why he's coming before you asking for all of them. Um, so the only, oh, and I did mention um, to Shane that any removal of trees, the stumps will have to be left in place. Um, I don't, okay, cool. Um, thank you, Shane, thanks for nodding. Um, so he, he is aware of that. The only question that I had for you, Shane, is if you could expand on what lawn improvement means for the gre green circle, green zone. So the part that's um, on the side of your house, are you looking just to plant turf grass? Are you looking, and it's more just out of yeah. curiosity. Yeah, it would be it would be grass, um, but it's also, there's so many, so many dense trees there that it just blocks all the sunlight from getting to where my grass currently is in the back. So just even removing the branches and things of that are going to open up uh, some sunlight and get some more sun back there. Okay, so there's a all. possibility it's... to leave an understory then. So the the large trees, um, because there were some. There's a large pine pines. over there. Yeah, there's yeah. a large pine over there that I don't really want to mess with, and it seems okay. healthy. Okay. Um, aside from the vines that you told me yeah. were, um, I yes. could actually remove myself because those are. Um, kind of killers, but um, other than that, there was, the, it's really the smaller trees around that big pine brica that I okay. was interested in, in possibly removing. Okay, um, then I, I don't have any comments. I'm comfortable with approving with standard conditions, um, stumps left in place. And then just to um, let the commission know, I did give him administrative approval to clear out the ornamental bitter street, bitter sweet, because that is what is girdling his trees and that is invasive. It's good. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael, Richard, uh, Jeff, Meg, any, any questions, comments? None for me. No questions, thanks. No questions for me. None for me at this time, thank you. Um, just a couple quick questions. I. Um, the the six to ten trees that you're planning to take down in, in that green zone area do you or abrika do you have a sense of you know what kind of caliber those are just um kind of looking for some more information on um and I, I know you were describing them as smaller trees but just want to have a sense uh, of what size trees those are yeah i'm calling trying to recollect so the large pine um is large I, that's very ambiguous i'm sorry <laughs> but the small the smaller ones are maybe around sapling size to like four dbh um, diameter at breast height or six dbh so they're not they're not um legacy trees by any means they're not of a substantial size and most of them are pine is that right um shane i believe i recall they're mostly pine I don't okay. think all of them are pine. Yeah, I think it was the one big pine. Maybe there's one other one. Um, but I think the rest might be oak. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I didn't take I don't know. My, I don't know my trees that well, so yeah. That's okay, Shane. I don't have that great of a memory, so there we go. Um, Pat, if, if you want, I can go out and take photos, and I can catalog what the trees are. Um, no, no, I, I think, I, mean, my, I guess my one, um, you know, condition I would request is before taking anything down other than the large pine um, that poses a safety risk, if, if Shane, if you can um, maybe just show, even hand mark on a plan where the trees are and, and maybe send in some, some pictures, I, we just typically don't give kind of a blanket approval to take trees down and like to understand where okay. specifically they are um yeah i sent the i sent the map right with the kind of area outlined what do you want just like an actual picture i can snap it on my phone happy to send that in if that's if that's what you need. yeah i think if you could do that and maybe on the map that you've sent if you could put like x marks approximately where the trees are yeah um just so that we can see um and and i don't think 
I, I, you know, my personal view, I don't think we need to approve that, but I think if, if that can be um, delivered to Brica before you take anything down in that area, just so that we have it in our records, if there's any question that comes up later. Okay. Um, and the only other thing, and, and this is shame not directed at you, but just as a general matter that I think we want to be thinking about, especially if there's any revisions to our, our bylaws down the road. Um, I, my views are anytime there's a safety issue, um, I, I don't think we need to hear that in the first instance. I think that's something that would always be appropriate um, for uh, the agent to act on administratively, um, you know, especially given that Shane, you know, there was that miscommunication over whether you had to be here at the last hearing. Like, I, I don't want that to ever be a problem. If, if there's a safety issue, that, that should always be something or, or you know, a tree that's at risk of, of falling on a home or a structure that should always be addressed, you know, as soon as possible. So um, just something to, to think about for the commission going forward. Thanks, Pat. Um, so can I have a motion, um, Jeff, to approve the MBZA um, subject to a condition uh, that the owner submit a plan just indicating the trees that will be taken down. Very good, sir. So uh, a motion to approve the MBZA for this Levin Scribnocket Road uh, subject to the conditions uh, that uh, the chair has uh, itemized. <laughs> And Michael, can you second? Second. <laughs> Richard. Third. Yeah, second. We, we have a new member. Yeah, well, we do. <laughs> Meg, Ben, how do you vote? We vote to approve, thank you. <laughs> Jeff, how do you vote? I uh, vote to approve, thank you. And Michael, how do you vote? Mm -hmm. Vote to approve. And, and Pat Gallagher, I vote to approve as well. So you are approved, Shane. Thank you very much uh, for coming. Great, thank you. And thank you, Brico, for all your help. Appreciate it. Of course, it. Shane, not a problem. Next up, we have an MBZA for 55 Daniel Street. Um, I think this is the first um, we have this on our agenda. Is the owner uh, or the representative on or, or in chambers? They're online. Could you bring He's muted. <laughs> I think Hello. he has gone mute. Yes, I do. Um, are we at the end of your meeting? Can we push me a little bit yes. forward? I think so. Thank yeah. you. I let Brika know I had another meeting um, tonight. So I'm just finishing up with that. So if you um, could. Sure. We, we have a few other discussion items, so that, that's totally fine to return hey, to this. I'm sorry. I, I appreciate it. No, no, that, that's no problem. Thanks, Debbie. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, so while we, while we wait to come back to that, let's um, move along. Next up, uh, we have the minutes for November 10th. Um, did anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? Um, he, hearing none, can I take a motion to approve the minutes? I'll um, submit the motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Um, Great. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Michael, how do you vote? Vote to approve. Great. Jeff, how do you vote? I vote to approve. Okay. Richard? Vote to approve. Meg? Meg Hagen approves. And, and Pat Gallagher, I vote to approve as well. Uh, so the minutes are approved for November 10th. Um, we have two discussion items on our agenda. The first is for lot 1819 Chestnut Street. Um, Rika, can you uh, introduce kind of what where we're at as far as status for this one? Sure. Amanda is actually here um, from G and H. I don't know if you can see. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Pat. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'll give you a moment to get set up. Uh, we were here in front of the board uh, or the commission back in September 
with some temporary disturbance that we ended up having to go through a minor buffer zone uh, activity application for an after the fact disturbance. Um, and at the last hearing we did, um, we agreed to provide an update to Breathe Away, uh, Breathe Away for October 1st, which we had communicated a little bit before. We didn't provide anything in writing at that point, but we did speak. Um, we've recently had the wetlands flagged uh, because that was a concern, so we prepared an existing conditions plan showing the wetland flagging um, and where the disturbance was from the soil testing that was conducted out on site. Uh, we also had the abutter that was here, um, Sacone, uh, I believe. Yeah, Rick, Rick. Yeah, so he was here as well and had some concerns with a tree uh, that was knocked down, so we did locate that also. So on the plans, you can see there's a, a 14 inch diameter stump that was cut down in order for the excavator to get back to the site where we did some soil test pits for uh, just to check to see if we could do any septic system design on the project. Um, and then on lot 19, we also came in here. There were no trees knocked down, but there was some ground disturbance uh, as well. So we've located the approximate areas of disturbance, again, where the excavator went. Uh, we've also added the buffer zones, uh, 25, 50, and 100 to the, um, to the plan for the commission to take a look at. The reason we're here tonight is really to get some feedback from the commission as far as what our next step would be based on the level of disturbance. So during our, um, or what we did was we calculated some areas, um, there's an area here, we have about 140 square feet that's within the zero to 25 foot no disturbed um, that was disrupted during the construction activities for the test pits. Then we also have about 580 square feet of disturbance from the soil testing. Uh, we had two test pits here and here, so with the excavator swinging around, moving some of the dirt, we had about 540 square feet between 25 and 50 on lot 18, and we also had about 240 square feet between the 25 and 50. There was really just the line of the excavator going in and disturbing some of the brush. On lot 19, the, um, all of the activity was between the 50 and 100 foot based on the wetlands that were flagged, and that was about 780 square feet between the 50 and 100. So um, when, we had last, when we had last talked, we were discussing restoration plans and um, what next steps were, but we did need to identify where the wetlands were uh, because we were going off of an older wetland line from 1997. So um, really we're looking for some guidance from the commission to find out what the next steps are. Um, obviously, the area has been untouched since the toil soil testing was done, um, other than a little bit of hand raking out there to kind of clean up the area. Um, we obviously don't want to do any more disturbance out there without providing the necessary either restoration plan or a notice of intent for future work, which at this time there's nothing proposed. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have any plans in the immediate future going back in there. And if we do, we understand that no more after the fact that we will be, we will be doing it the right way, um, and uh, we will be coming in front of the commission for a notice of intent for any future work that's proposed on that property, um, anything within the zero to 100 foot buffer. So um, where there's minimal disturbance, uh, 140 square feet, um, we'd like to ask the commission if, you know, whether we, you know, just leave it as is and let it restore to its natural condition um, over time and, and let it re, uh, reestablish on its own uh, and not cause any more disturbance out there or if the commission would require us to do some sort of restoration in those areas that were disturbed. Was it just underbrush that they, they could disturb? The majority of it was underbrush and then it was, you know, probably small saplings. Yeah, small saplings. No, no, nothing significant. The most significant item that was, or the was most the significant was the 14 inch diameter tree and that's um, right at the roadway and that's within the 50 to 100. Uh, Rika, what are your thoughts on what might be appropriate just as far as restoration here, hmm. if any? I have a few thoughts. I think I think there's merit to it's going, this ecosystem will revegetate on its own. 
So I think along the roadside, um, especially on the small access areas where they had to break small sample saplings to mobilize through, um, I think it's okay. <laughs> um, if the commission wanted to forego planting there or seeding there, um, I'm really going to defer to you for what you would prefer. Um, for that area within the zero to 25 to maintain status quo, I think there should be some plantings of what was already there. I think the majority of it was blueberry. Um, so perhaps planting um, some blueberries in that area to restore it. I think at the same time, if the commission wanted to restore all the areas, um, you could request the applicant purchase um, similarly herbaceous plugs, so already growing plants um, of like kind that was there um, before this disturbance. You could also ask that they seed it. Um, we, we, Conservation Department, Conservation Commission, um, could also look at it next spring and see what is growing, right? Um, since it's had a few months to release seed and then now whatever seeds have been there will be dormant over winter and then will sprout. So uh, there are a few different options that we can go forward with. Um, I think considering it is December, it's probably worth coming back to in spring. I think that's the I think that's the best option, um, and we can get the most bang for everybody's buck that way. Um, we can monitor it, we can see what's growing, what may need to happen, then they're not spending money on plugs that they may not need to buy. And um, to, to follow up on that as well, is in the event that something comes to fruition over the next several months through the winter, and then the applicant decides to uh, move forward with the development um, of those two properties for a single house lot or um, do any other work within that zero to 100 foot buffer that we can just roll it over into a notice sure. of intent that we plan on filing. We'd be able to give sure. um, you and the commission a, a better feel for it in the spring as well. Sure. After we've had a chance to look at it and talk with our client, find out what the next, um, next step is for them as far as proceeding with any type of you know, house on there, um, or if they're just going to leave it as is. Um, but we, that probably be a sure. good time. And in the interim, if we decide to move forward with anything, a notice of intent would be coming forward to the commission sure. anyways for a review, and we could incorporate some yeah. plantings at that time. Yeah. So for example, like restoration of the 25 foot buffer. So that, that makes sense to me, and I, I think, you know, particularly given that we're now into December, um, yeah, I think it makes sense to wait until spring, see what's growing out there. Um, I, I think, you know, I want to be practical about, you know, this is a relatively small area right. and obviously was not ideal, um, but also, you know, was not intentional um, and didn't disturb, um, you know, any portion of the wetland itself. So. I, I'm inclined to say let's uh, let's sit on this until the spring and see what's starting to grow out there. And at that point, uh, you know, if the owner, you know, if, if we come back and say, well, it doesn't look like anything is is really regrowing, um, and and if we can take a look then at you know some plantings that would be relatively um, similar to what was previously there, that would seem appropriate to me. Um, but want to see if any of the other commissioners have, have any thoughts or, or disagree. Um, you know, uh, let, let's have a discussion on this. Pat, I fully agree with you. I agree with you too, Pat. Makes sense to me as well. Same here. Thank you, Pat. Great. Um, so I don't know. Um, I mean, this is kind of in our, our discussion items category. I don't know that we need to necessarily vote on this, but um, you know, I think we're all on the same page with, with what our expectations are. Yeah. Does that work for you, Amanda? It does, and we can certainly, um, I mean, the, the majority of 
already the commission knows me that I'll be happy to reach out to Rika uh, in the spring um, and we can revisit the site together at the same time and, and see what the next steps are so we're on the same page. Um, I've been, you know, in touch with her, giving her status updates, so she's, she's been aware. We don't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm by my word. I stick by my word. Great. Well, thank you again for following up on this, and, and thanks for coming in tonight. No problem. Thanks for having us. I, you know, I really appreciate it and, and the guidance, so that's very helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Just before moving on to the next item, um, Debbie just wanted to check in and see if you are ready for us yet. Um, if you to... can give me five minutes. Oh, five minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just because you guys changed your meeting date to, to the first, which kind of she messed said. up with my schedule. She's a conservation. So I apologize. Five minutes. I'll be back. Five minutes. Thanks, okay. Um, so in the interim, the next item on our list um, is for 237 Pleasant Street. Um, this was uh, it is the proposal for a housing development at St. John's on the property of St. John's Church um, that abuts Del Park. Um, and and um, you'll recall we had uh, the development team in our last meeting to give us a presentation on their plans. Um, there is not right now at least any wetland jurisdiction. Um, so we don't have this before us for, for any formal proceedings, um, but had talked about, you know, whether uh, in the same vein as the other 40B projects, we've heard from whether it makes sense to give the, the ZBA feedback, given that Delcar, which is under conservation jurisdiction, um, abuts this project. Um, so I was hoping to, you know, prepare some written thoughts, but, you know, haven't uh, been able to do that. But, you know, I, I think just wanted to get the commission's thoughts on, um, I guess, number one, is this something that we want to weigh in on in our capacity as, you know, a neighbor to this project? Um, and number two, if we are going to weigh in, um, what do the other commissioners think is the appropriate response to this? Um, Jeff, Michael, can we start with you two? I don't think I have a particular response to it. Um... The only thing that really came up of interest is whether or not there'll be connectivity between uh, Del Cart and this and this particular project, either by trail or or elsewhere. Um, it didn't seem like we had a lot of room here for input, you know, in terms of their plan. I, I didn't see anything that really struck me as something that we had to address. That's correct. So I guess that's kind of where I'm I'm standing. Michael, any thoughts? No, I, I guess I don't. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm struggling to, to recall uh, every, all the details from last time. But uh, yeah, if, if we don't have any jurisdiction, um, I guess I don't have any any thoughts. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, Richard, and any thoughts or, or input that? Um, I kind of agree with Jeff. I mean, if there if there's going to be some uh, a trail or something connecting uh, the development, and uh, I think that's a, a very nice idea. But other than that, uh, I don't have anything to comment on or put forward on. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Megan, any anything to add to that? Shane, do you know where they stand as far as um, where they are in the process? Still, are they still in front of the ZBA? Yes. I believe they are. I think, yes. I think, in fact, tonight's CBA was probably touching on this, um, you know, among their other agenda items. So where along the process would our comments come in as far as, you know, we submit a formal if they're already in front of the CBA, where, just questioning where would they, um, within the process, where would they have an impact? It's a good question. I, I think... Um, I mean, my understanding is that this isn't being voted on tonight, although I, I might be wrong about that. Um, but either it'll still be open before the ZBA or if it's voted on tonight, um, 
And if it is approved, there's still going to be work, you know, e even though it will be approved as a formal matter, there's still um, a, a lot of work that will come, you know, as part of the, you know, on the staff side, um, how they're going to have to work with the owner and, and developer on the project. So it, it's a good point. I, I'm, I'm inclined, I, I, I think the potential for connectivity with Belcart and the potential to have, um, you know, some right to use parking in that area um, would be, you know, really valuable to the town. Um, and, and so my thinking was to have just a, a very limited kind of comment letter almost coming from the commission um, expressing our support for connectivity um, if, if the project is developed um, to, to express support for connectivity with Delcar and an ability, you know, to, for the town um, to work with the developer to provide for some parking rights in that area. So that, that's kind of what, where I was leaning um, as well. I, I personally fully support that. I think if that's going to, I think, um, maybe it would help the developer be more inclined to follow through with that um, if we're showing support and to you know give the residents of Franklin better access to Delcart. I think that's worth a letter of support from my perspective. Um, I, thank you, thank you. And I, I appreciate everyone's comments. And, and I think you know part of this is we're, I don't want to kind of stray out of our lane, um, so to speak. But also, you know, think that Delcard is is you know a treasure for us, and and if we can do something that's going to increase accessibility to Delcard, that to me, you know, seems worth uh, weighing in on. Um, great. Um, well, I see Debbie is on. Um, Debbie, thanks for for bearing with us. Um, no, thank you. Really embarrassing. I'm sorry to to no, delay. No. Um, Sometimes nope. these things happen. Yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, we, we were still had a few things on to talk about. So um, this is for 55 Daniel Street. Is that correct? That is correct. Can um, you give us a brief description of what is proposed? Sure. So I'm representing the owner is Soshana Gropen. Gropen, yes. Gropen, thank you. And um, her dad is here as well. Um, Mark. Um, so they're looking to put a small addition on the existing single family house. Um, if you want me to share my screen, I'm happy to do that. Sure, just give us one moment. Okay. Okay, you should be a co host now. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, so I delineated the wetlands, um, you know, probably about a, a month and a half ago now. Um, I believe that um, Brieke Lee has been out there and has um, checked the line and, and was happy with it. Um, so all of the proposed work is going to be located outside the 50 foot buffer. Um, so you can see where the addition is on, the proposed addition is on the right hand side of the existing house. Um, the existing house is um, 1,350 square feet. Um, the lot is just about an acre in size. Um, so the proposed addition is um, 912 square feet. Um, so it's under the 1,000 square feet limit. Um, the closest the work will be is about 70 feet from the wetland. Um, the area where the proposed addition um, is currently um, impervious patio um, for most of it. Um, there won't be any tree removal for the um, um, for the project. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> there will be um, there is a fence along the the edge of the patio currently. Um, that has some ornamental vegetation on it that will be removed. And um, we're proposing erosion control for the project. Currently, um, 
there's a the kind of a gravel parking area I wouldn't even really say a driveway located in the area um, just adjacent to where the the project will take place I think that's about it it's a pretty simple project I'm happy to answer any questions thanks Debbie um, Brika did you have um, any feedback or, or thoughts um, based on the application um, just one well two comments um, so I don't know if you were able to go into your Google Drive and I also included photos um, similar to what Debbie had included in the packet so you can see that it is a raised patio area already and it's existing disturbed I mean it's, it's I don't think there will be any adverse impact by installing this accessory building um, to that point that is a key word it is considered an accessory building which means it also has to go to ZBA now typically the Commission doesn't approve projects until ZBA has given their approval um, but I have had internal discussions with the building commissioner Gus Brown and he said that for this scale and scope of project it is fine if the Commission gives their approval before ZBA so that's my official comment okay um, thank you for that Brika. yeah I, I think you know I would also um, you know, I think the primary reason for for not approving until the other boards uh, have done so is if it's um, approval on an NOI there's a little more administrative paperwork that's involved in that but for the MVCA hopefully a little simpler process if there's anything we need to go back and update um, if any changes are made at the ZBA does that sound right yes that's correct um, Jeff any, any questions comments uh, no Mr. Chairman I'm fine thank you uh, Michael any questions for you no questions thanks uh, Richard good no questions right uh, Meg no questions for me at this time thank you okay um, I also am fine um, with everything as it's been presented uh, and and thanks Debbie for um, putting that all together for us uh, thank you we appreciate it um, so as I said, I'm, I'm comfortable approving this, notwithstanding that it's still uh, pending approvals before the ZBA. Um, Meg, can I have a motion uh, to approve the MBZA subject to our standard conditions? Yes, I will submit the motion to approve the MBZA subject to the standard conditions. Okay. Uh, Richard, can I get a second for that, please? Second that. Okay. Uh, Jeff, how do you vote? Uh, Jeff, I'll approve. Great, right. Michael? Michael Ryan votes to approve. Richard? I vote to approve. And Meg? Meg Hagan approve. And, and Pat Gallagher, I approve as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. I was uh, muted. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, Mike. Um, so that concludes our agenda. There's one additional item not on our agenda um, that, that Rika and I wanted to talk through a bit, um, which is the open space uh, plan and, and trying to iron out a little bit of, of our schedule um, because this is uh, very quickly um, getting to the time where we're going to start having um, open meetings um, with the various stakeholder groups and also the public hearings that Brian had talked about at our last meeting. Um, so I, I think we just wanted to get some feedback on what is the commission's thinking on, on kind of frequency and timing um, because a, a lot of this is going to be in addition to our our ordinary you know twice a month um, hearings I think if we could append this to either the beginning or the end of our regular meeting that would be a good thing and probably if we could do it pre-meeting pre the be even better I agree yes I agree not a fan uh, of having extra meetings if we don't have to I think so as well Meg and any issues if if for you if we do this it's just maybe with some of this but I can I can make it work on my end it might be a little bit more virtual depending on um probably schedules for the family and uh and such and babysitter availability but I can make beforehand work as long as we don't mind an occasional visitor. 
Okay. No, that I, I probably has it. something good to say. Very important <laughs> stakeholder right there. Yes. So I, I guess, and, and thank you everyone. I, I, uh, I appreciate, you know, I, I know this is going to be a, a big, but important investment of, of everyone's time. And, and so, um, I'm thanking everyone in advance, um, for tolerating, um, you know, my, my nudginess on this. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the next question is, you know, so, you know, I think we could do this a couple different ways. Um, one possibility would would be to essentially start all of our meetings um, at six o'clock instead of seven o'clock and, and have that first hour be devoted uh, to discussion on the open space plan and, and being able to have the stakeholder groups come in um, to weigh in, to give presentations on kind of their different pieces um, and, and and just to quickly step back when we're talking about stakeholder groups we're talking about um, you know other boards and commissions um, Roger I, I see Roger's on from the Ag Commission um, that could mean the ZBA planning board um, but also uh, you know other organizations like the Franklin downtown partnership mm -hmm. uh, the uh, school department um, you know, the rec department certainly. Um, so they're, they're kind of a combination of, of town bodies and also, you know, other important um, stakeholders from town who will be inviting in and to give their thoughts. Um, so to the question, do we want to aim to start our meetings, you know, at six o'clock for every meeting um, and whoever is available um, to do so can you know essentially tune in or, or come to town hall an hour before our normal start time, or would it make more sense to do it every other meeting and to try and start at five o'clock? But that way, you know, we're not giving the extra hour for every meeting. Uh, so just wanted to get get people's thoughts on it if there's a preference between those approaches. You know, unlike everyone else here, I'm, I'm retired. So whether or not you start at five, six, or seven, I'm good with it. But I think it's more important for those of you who have full-time jobs and <laughs> have to make things work that way to, to weigh in. Yeah, I much prefer a six o'clock start to a five o'clock start. Okay. Is this going to go on? Is this forever? It's like the, the scene in Sandlot, it's forever. <laughs> yeah, this, Just 10 the, minutes. Just the 10 goal, minutes. So yeah. the, the goal is to have a final approved open space and recreation plan in September. So working backwards from that, um, you know, we will have, I think the first half of the year will be focused on getting input um, from folks and then including three public hearings um, that we'll be holding and, and those will actually be separate from the normally scheduled CONCOM meetings. Um, and and uh, I think there are specific themes that um, Brian uh, Taberner has kind of set up for those three public hearings. So I, I, I would expect kind of the first third to half of the year will be kind of information gathering. And then from there, we will actually be, you know, uh, planning staff and, and Brika will be drafting the plan and we'll be reviewing it kind of over the summer, I would, I would expect. Does that sound right, Brika? Yeah, that, that, that sounds right. I can go into more. So I, have, I, have the, I have the memo pulled up if you, I can um, discuss those public hearings a little bit more. So the first public hearing will be in February, and that will be the 2016, sorry, open space um, plan review and current priorities. Um, about two weeks before that public hearing, a community survey will go out, um, both digitally and hard copy, with um, associated outreach materials, which I'm working on now. Um, to get all residents for this this public, oh, sorry, 
let's go back. It's a comp. It's it's a it's a large process. So we have our focus groups, our stakeholder groups, which Pat mentioned are the other community groups, um, both like civic engagement and rec and open space users. And so we will be inviting those in to um, those groups in prior to our hearings, which is what Pat was asking. Do we want to start at five and have two hours before our hearing once a month, or do we want to come in at six? So we'll be inviting those focus groups in. And then we'll be having public hearings, which are for all residents, which are also stakeholders. Um, and then this community survey goes out to all residents. So going back to what I was saying, that community survey goes out about two weeks before that first public hearing. Um, so that community survey will familiarize um, the general public on what the OSRP process is, and then it's a standard survey um, that the town has used in past years. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll also advertise in that mailing all these, the following hearings. So public hearing number two is to discuss the goals and objectives for this current 2023 open space plan update. That is why that survey is going out ahead of time. So folks can respond to the survey, they can let town staff me know what they are most interested in, what they would like to prioritize, and then we can discuss that at public hearing number two. And then public hearing number three in June is when the draft 2023 open space plan can be reviewed by all. So then we can have another round of public comment of folks either additionally um, or adding additional goals and objectives or you know residents saying that they would like something in there that's not. Um, and then after that draft review, there will be a one month public comment period. So throughout this whole process, we will be, to answer your question, it's, it's not indefinitely, but it is for the next 10 months. And I think most of the work is gonna be front loaded between now and Memorial Day. That is, sounds like. yes, yeah. Um, so I, I think it sounds like the preference is probably to have all of our meetings for the new year, or at least the first half of the new year, start at 6 o'clock. Um, I think one important distinction to note is that we're required to have a quorum of members for our public hearings and for our typical business anytime we're voting on anything. Um, we would not be under the same quorum requirement um, for those six o'clock meetings. So, um, you know, there's certainly some flexibility and, and um, you know, we would, we would obviously work, you know, schedule wise, being able to be virtual, uh, of course, and, and we, we want to make it as easy for people to participate uh, as it can be. Um, so I, I think we'll, we'll kind of strategize on what the right balance is there. So, um, so, Pat, do we think we can conclude the, uh, the new hearing in an hour? Is, is that enough time? For, um... So it's not so much a conclusion. Well, Pat, do you want to talk about your themes? Yes. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, we were, so the open space plan is, um, it, it's something that's required by the Department of Environmental Protection. And there are these um, you know, guidelines on what the plan is, you know, supposed to look like and, and takes into account um, demographics from the town, an inventory of all the different open spaces, um, everything that really goes into, you know, kind of documenting what's part of the plan and then gets into the, the various goals um, for the next either five or seven years, um, you know, of, of the plan's lifespan. I don't, I, in looking through kind of what the different pieces of the plan are, I think it makes more sense to approach our sessions with the stakeholders around themes such as, you know, conservation space, forestry, wetlands, um, recreational, you know, sports and recreation, um, even climate change, right? Because I, I think a lot of what we're talking about in the open space plan um, you know, climate mitigation and, and uh, it, it's going to be central to that. So we were kind of batting around some ideas to say this night is going to be this theme and this night is going to be this theme and to open it up 
you know, in trying to identify specific stakeholders who may want to be participating on those nights, um, but also to open it up to others to say, if you think you have an interest in this theme, we'd like to hear from you on, on this particular night. So, um, Pat and I have been talking about ways to engage people during that hour. Um, I've also had internal discussions and you're right, it's not a lot of time to get stakeholder engagement. Um, originally, Pat and I had made a schedule where it was once a month and that's what um, passed in past historically for the OSRP process. You're only inviting focus groups in once a month and that just didn't seem like a lot of time to reach everybody, right? Especially because this is supposed to be the grand new open space plan and we have all these other properties that we've acquired and we want to master plan a lot of different areas. Um, so as far as making it so everybody is heard and everybody has a voice aside from the survey, um, Pat and I discussed having the Chromebooks open in the audience and I've created a Google form so people can type comments in if they don't have time to come up to the mics or if they don't want to. Um, we can have comment cards also, so if people are not tech savvy or if they can't have a Chromebook, they can just write them, they can give them to me. Um, we also have um, a web page now, so it has that Google form on the web page and my contact information. Um, Lily, our marketing specialist, will be pushing out all this information as well over the next 10 months to make sure we have community involvement. Um, Brian suggested, or Brian and Jamie, I can't remember who suggested what, but um, either capping people, like you have a minute, you know, to think about what you want to say, come up, you say it, okay. And if we start to hear repeating comments, we can make note, all right, you know, we've heard a lot about pickleball, <laughs> you know, so thank you, you know, we've heard a lot about pickleball, but let's try and think about some other things. And then maybe we can actually get into more of the weeds and get some really unique ideas that way. Um, and then as far as now that we're having, and, and correct me, um, Pat, if your brain didn't go this way, but um, now that we are meeting every hearing an hour in advance, we can repeat themes. So we can have two climate change nights. We can have two you know, forestry nights. We could have two recreation nights. And so then that way, if one night doesn't work for whomever, then they can show up to the other one. Right, I, I think so too. And oh, Sorry, Richard, go ahead. We're assuming that we're going to have a full house every night? That's a, it's a good question. And I think with some themes, we'll probably have more people than others. Um, you know, for example, um, Schmidt's Farm and Maple Hill are going to be two yeah. of the big topics that we're talking through. And, and I imagine that there are going to be a lot of people who want to weigh in on this, um, and, and rightly so. Um, other topics, I, I think, you know, can be more informal. And, and I, you know, I kind of envision these as more, you know, sitting around a conference table type of conversations, as opposed to, you know, the formal setup that, that we have for our hearings and, and saying, you know, if it's a smaller group of people who's at a particular working session, like pull up chairs to the, you know, the front table and, and we can just have it, have a conversation as opposed to, you know, hearing formal testimony. Yeah. Um, so I, I think a little bit it is going to depend on the topic. The public may want to have different time options. You know, like maybe six o'clock is bad for some sure. residents. I, yes, <laughs> that has been would be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is something that has been brought up, um, and something I'm struggling with. But that's why we have the digital um, avenues. That's why I'm here. They can send me an email, they can call me. Um, it's not a temporal condition, but you know, Pat brought up going to the high school for these public hearings, um, so going to where the people are and making it that informal setting. Um, I also thought at these public hearings about 
um, expensing food if that's something the commission wanted. Everybody comes for food. So, you know, we can make it fun um, and engaging. Um, but at the same point, you know, going, comparing it to meeting at five, you know, I think that's more difficult for people to work around, especially people with kids. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm it's just a balancing act. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes I can't think of an example of who's done this, but sometimes there's maybe a meeting at night and a meeting in mid morning. You know, I mean, I know that's terrible for me as somebody who has a full time job, but well, Jeff it might and I can work handle it. for. <laughs> you know, there might be people that can only go mid morning. Yeah. No, nope. so. I, 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 if the commission would like, I have no problem scheduling a meeting during the working day i mean i'm here so utilize me yeah you know it's fine um that actually reminded me of something as well pat had mentioned for those groups that um are municipal boards and commissions having a liaison go to their hearings if they cannot come to us as well um so i did mark down pat um on the public stakeholder spreadsheet that I have, which which of those groups have online hearings, or not hearings, um, just not online, geez, meetings <laughs> in general. So. Okay, no, that's helpful too. Um, I, so yeah, I, I think it's gonna be a combination of things. I think it, you know, if there are boards that we can go to them or have, you know, have someone kind of be our our delegate to go and, and sit in and, and get feedback we can do that um, if there are opportunities to do kind of you know a weekday morning coffee at town hall for people who aren't able to make the evenings and we certainly would you know we wouldn't necessarily be able to be there but i think Rika, as long as you would be available for that i think that's valuable too um, for people who just can't make the evenings and Brika, as long as it's not a Tuesday or Thursday, I could help you on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. I will take you up on that. That would be fantastic. I think it would be a big help if someone from the Conservation Commission is there. And I'm coming. All right. Yeah, and I have every other Friday off, so I can do Friday mornings. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think this is, I, so I, I want to be respectful of people's time as I'm talking about taking away all of your time. Um, I think this is helpful and, and we'll sit down and, and kind of sharpen our pencils on the schedule. Um, and, you know, depending on the feedback that we're getting from people, we can always make an adjustment um, if we need to. But I, I think the plan to start our meetings at six o'clock um, sounds like the right one. And, um, I will do everything I can uh, to move our our kind of regular business along as fast as we can to make sure that we're not um, taking up too much of people's time. Um, so it, it'll be a, a team effort. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, well, is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss or should we adjourn? What does Jeff Lewis say? Indubably? Yeah. <laughs> Motion to close? Motion to close. Second. Okay. Richard? Second. Vote to close. Thank Vote to close. you. Vote to close. Vote to close. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Bye.